In this video, I'm going to go over how to make a copy of an array in C. So why are we doing this? Copying an array, shouldn't that be easy? It's easy to make copies of variables in C. So we're going to find that the same sort of technique we can use to make a copy of a variable isn't going to translate to arrays. So if I were to say here like int x is equal to 5, and then I say int y, if I say y is equal to x, what's going on here is that y is going to be set to whatever x is set to. So y is going to get a copy of 5, and y is going to be equal to 5. And then if I then later modify x and set x equal to 2, if we're familiar with how C variables and assignment work, we know that you know y isn't somehow set to 2. You know, y is still going to be 5, and I can print them out to confirm that. And so we could say like y percent d, x percent d, and we're just going to print them out just to confirm that that is the case. And I'll just do a compile here. and we run it, and we get that y is 5 and x is 2. So with arrays, we're not going to get this same sort of behavior with, with arrays and pointers. So if I say here, like int a is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then I make a pointer here b, so a pointer to an integer here. And this pointer to an integer, it can point to an array. And so it can refer to an array. If I say b is equal to a, we're not getting that b is going to be equal to a copy of a. And we might think that if we're less familiar with how pointers and arrays work in C. So B is not going to get a copy of this array. What A really is, A is really a memory address that refers to this array here in memory. And B as a pointer is also going to store a memory address. And so when I say B is equal to A, what's really going on here is that B is going to store the same memory address as A. That means that B is going to refer to the same thing in memory as A. They're both actually going to refer to the same array. That means when I modify one of them, I'm going to modify the other one. So if I were to say here like A0 is equal to 10, if I do a printf of B0, we're going to get that it is also equal to 10. If I do a printf of B and we'll say here, a as well, we're going to find that they're they're referring to the same the same uh, things in memory. They actually have the same memory address stored in each one of them. So we'll just do a compile of this and we'll run it. And I get that you know B zero here is ten because it actually got modified when A got modified because they're actually referring to the same thing. And you can see that here when I print out their pointer. So I print out the B pointer value and I print out the a pointer value which is essentially a memory address and you can see they're identical and that makes sense because I set them to be identical but the, the the point is is that what's going on is that I can't really make a copy of an array this way if I want to make a copy of an array I've got to do something different so to make a copy of the array we could do something like this like if I knew at compile time when I'm writing my program if I knew at compile time that the copy of the array had to be a certain size and that I only needed so many copies of the array, I could technically hard code all of that into my program. So let's say that like we know that A is 5 and we know that the copy I need has to then be 5 as well. I could just declare a variable in my program, you know, copy, it's, it's an array with, with 5 values in it, and then I could just copy A into the copy by you know, using a loop and, and just setting all the copy values to be equal to the A value. So I'm going to say here, I going from zero to five, let's set copy I equal to A at I. So set copy to have the same values as I. Then we're going to say here, let's print out copy just so we can see what's inside of it. And we're going to see it's the same thing as A. Copy is going to store the exact same values as A. So we're going to, I'm just going to say I and then copy at i just to print it out and we're going to find that copy you know now contains all the values that a has in it but the only reason why i could do it this simply is because i'm saying that i knew at the time i wrote my program compile time so compile time is like as you're writing the program so i'm saying i knew as i was writing the program that copy had to be the same size as a and i could then declare an array in my program, you know, at compile time, that's that size and make the copy happen. And, and, and you know, we're, we're good that it's the same. What if I don't know though? 
So what if I don't know the size of the array at compile time? This happens in all kinds of cases. So if we're like taking records from a database or taking records from a file and we're not sure how large the array needs to be that stores them at runtime, and then we want to make a copy of it, how would I make that work? So to make that work, we're going to use dynamic memory allocation and we're going to allocate space for an array that's large enough to hold the copy at runtime. So to use dynamic memory allocation, <clears throat> I'm going to include stdlib.h. So stdlib.h has functions like malloc and calloc that allow us to declare uh, dynamically allocate space uh, on the heap at runtime. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a function here called array copy. And array copy is going to accept an array as a parameter and a length as a parameter. So it's going to have two. It's going to have a pointer to an array and it's going to have a length as well. And it's going to return a pointer to the copy of the array that's going to be created on the heap. So we'll make the function definition down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to make space for a copy. I'll just call it C. And I'm going to say C here is equal to malloc, the length, times size of int. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying go get space to store an array on the heap it's called that is this size, this length here, times however much space it takes to store an integer. Then what I can do is I can copy my array values into this copy and return the pointer. And then I'm going to have two different arrays. I'm going to have two different arrays at that point that are each going to be set to the same values. So I could say like for int i is equal to zero, i is less than the length, i plus plus. I'm going to say here c at i is equal to array at i to copy the values over. And then I'm just going to return c. So I'm going to return the pointer there. And this is then going to make a copy of the array. So I could then call this function and maybe we'll test it out with different, different arrays here. So I'll call this like a one, I'll call this here a two, and we'll just test it out with arrays of different lengths. So I'll say like 99, you know, 50, 30, 70, 80, 90, 100, 50. And then what I will do is I'll call array copy. So I'm going to say like a one copy is equal to array copy a one and a one has five elements in it. This one here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight elements in it. So I'm going to say int star a two copy is equal to array copy a two eight. And what's going to happen here is that, is that this time we're setting a pointer, not to like a one, we're setting a pointer to what's being returned from this function. What's being returned from this function is a pointer to a newly allocated array in memory. So a new array is being created in memory. And then we're copying in the values from the original array into that copy from zero until the length of the array. Then we're returning a pointer to it. So here a one copy is actually going to be referring to a different array than a one. Same thing with a two here. So then if I were to print out these copies here, like let's just say we do a printout, I'm going to say int i is equal to zero, i is less than five, i plus plus, and we'll print out a one copy. So we'll say print f a one copy at percent d is equal to percent d, and we'll print out a when we'll print out a one copy at i, and then I'm going to do the same thing for a two. Now actually what I'll do, I'll just put it on new lines like this. I'll just say slash n, put on new line. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for a2, print out a2 as well. a2, a2, and a2 is gonna go up to eight. And if I run this here, compile it there, we'll just do a clear and then I'll run it. I get here a1 copy is one, two, three, four, five. A2 copy is 99, 50, 30, 70, all the way up to 50 there. And so now I've got these two copies that exist. Now, what's kind of neat is that then I can modify the original arrays and it's not going to affect the copy. 
So let's just say before I print out the A1 copy, I modify A10 and I set it equal to 10, like we did before. And let's say before I print out the A2 copy, I modify A20 and I set it equal to, let's just say zero. So we expect this now to be zero. We would expect this now to be 10. If I recompile it here and run it again, I get that the A1 copy is still one. I get that the A2 copy is still 99, even though I modified A10 and A20. It's because they're different arrays in memory now. They're actually different arrays in memory. And, and we could confirm this if we were to do a printf of the pointers. So if I did like a printf, we'll put a new line in first here. But if I do a printf of the pointers and I say like, let's do a printf of uh, A1 percent P and I'll say A1 copy percent P and then I print out A1 and A1 copy. What we're gonna find, I'll just do one more recompile here. What we're gonna find is that A1 and A1 copy, the memory addresses are actually different. And the memory addresses are different because they're referring to two different arrays in memory. That's why they're different. That's why when we modify one, it doesn't modify the other, despite the fact that they are a copy of each other, despite the fact that one is a copy of the other. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.